Hey guys, in today's video we're going to talk about migrations. Now when we first generated our model, we generated a couple things. We generated our model file, which is this. We generated a test file, which we won't talk about. And we generated a migration file. Now, if you navigate over to DB and you navigate inside the migrate folder, you can see that there's actually this thing called uh, a create or companies file with some numbers around it. Those numbers aren't really that important, but if you click on that file, this is what you would call a migration file. And what a migration file does is it generates those tables that you see in our ERD diagram. So these tables are needed for you to actually record any data that the user posts to your site that you want to save from the user. So for example, for our org company, we want to save the name and the company type ID. So that's pretty much what you want to do here. So for this video, for this migration, what we want to do is we want to create a table. It already tells you what, what it does. These, this code is already generated by, the, by, by creating the model. And you can do something like t.stringName null equals false. That's really all you have to do to, to complete that table over here or companies well there's only three attributes the ID is always automatically created for you by by rails that's called the primary key it's a unique key that has no duplicates and increments every time you save a new record on it the name is what we just typed out and asked for asked for the migration file to create when you run it and then there's a company type ID and to to really record the company type ID, there's something called T belongs to. So similar to how we how we explicitly wrote out the relationships in our model, we also have to explicitly write out our relationships in the migration files. But that's only usually for when you have something like a foreign key. A foreign key, this key is to refer to to another another table, so you can see that or company is connected to the type company table, and really this company type ID is really to refer to what type this company is. And something that I forgot to do in the last video is show the relationship between the company and the type. So what you want to do is you want to do a belongs to here as well. So belongs to type company foreign key type company ID. So now in your model, it knows to make the relationship between your org company table and your type company tables. So that relationship is shown by our foreign key type company ID. And that's really all there is to it actually. Why I chose a no no false here is to, to tell you that to tell the user that you cannot save a company with an empty name. So that pretty much just ensures that something is always entered for the company name. And that's really all I wanted to go through today. You can add some more fields if you want to in this in this in this migration file. The timestamps the timestamps uh, Word here tells us or creates two fields. It creates a create at and update at field or attributes. So it creates just two more attributes, and that's really something that Ruby always or Rails always, always automatically inserts for you. You can keep it, you could get rid of it, whatever you want. It's really not that important. But we could also ask you to add more add more fields that you think you're needed. So I think an avatar field is needed if your company has a logo that they want to put up. Uh, let's say they we want uh, a text. Now text is another type. A string is something like 255 characters, but a text allows you to, to insert as many words into this field as you want. So that's the difference between text and string. String is, has a limited amount of words that you can put in there. Text has pretty much unlimited. And you want another field, let's say if you want this company to be verified, then let's say you would want some verification documents to be saved. And you want to check if this company would be verified. If you're going to have a verification process, um, you might want to 
uh, true or false. A Boolean is pretty much saving into the record with a true or false value. And it's a, it, a company can either be verified or it's not. It's a true or false value. So that's pretty much all I want to go through for this video. Um, also, if you, you might not have known, but you could also generate migration. So you could say Rails generate migration. Um, let's say test. <coughs> And what this will do is it will just generate another migration file right under here, just so you know that if you if you if you have something that or you, if you have something that you have to create a migration for, have to create a table for, but it's not really needed a model for it, then you just generate the migration for it. So there's your little test migration, but we don't need that. So you could do a rail rails destroy migration test and that would just get rid of that migration but apparently I can't spell destroy so we'll just do that and that will destroy your migration anyways that's all I wanted to go through in this video please rate, comment, subscribe if you like what I'm doing uh, if you don't then just I don't know watch someone else's videos um, you know leave a thumbs down because it hurts my ratings anyways please rate, comment, subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next video